Hello and welcome everyone to another one of my videos in which we discuss various plugins and plugin related topics. Here we have a screenshot from my phone and it shows the so called weekly recap of my YouTube statistics on the YouTube Creators app. There I got this unusual message that an older video is taking off that wasn't very popular before. Jumped from number 15 to 4 in the most popular videos and it was about the plugin Yamahook. In this video I was not amazed by the plugin because first of of all the marketing claimed that it uses AI even though it seemed to me like it was more of an algorithmic thing but that was not the real problem. The real problem about this plugin was that it was downloadable as a free plugin while the content that can be generated from it is only available if you put money on the table. So that was a little bit disappointing in the moment I tested this plugin. I gotta say I'm really unhappy about this video at this point in time because the plugin changed in a way that makes this just horribly outdated. So please don't watch this old video anymore. It's cool when old videos of me are taking off but in this particular case maybe not so much. So let's hop into our door of choice in this case Bitwig and open an instance of launch lizard and just play some chord. Whatever this is hopefully it sounds pretty jazzy. Okay great now we have a chord and it sounds like this pretty enjoyable chord and now whatever the size of your current project is this is just as an example you have a project and it has already content in it then you can load the Yamaha sound assistant which tries to log into something and after a while it gives up and tells you you need to open that thing click on that icon and it opens a standalone application called Yamaha Agent. More about that later. If you now click on match while playing back the music, it listens to whatever is playing because you've instantiated it on the master channel. And now you can listen to loops that will also fit to the stuff that you have in your project. So let me just play back the project while also playing back the loops that are suggested here. So as you can see it was not always a perfect fit but there is a lot of usable stuff in there. The problem however that I had in that video was that you cannot drag these loops out into your project even though there are drag symbols and the reason for that can be seen on the other side of the interface where it says buy. I cannot buy these samples because I don't have a subscription and if I click on the renew button it brings me to the website where I can select one of the three available subscription services. But don't turn the video off just yet if you're just thinking to yourself no subscription services because there is more. There is more. Stay. Stay here. I still want to talk about the subscription service for a while because this is one of the rare exceptions where a subscription service is actually kind of justified even though I won't subscribe to it. Because the idea of this is that you subscribe to the service of the Yamaha Hook team keep providing new loops from time to time so they are continuously working on this and that's why it is a subscription and not a perpetual license. Okay so that makes sense. It can be debated if the prices are good or not. I don't care because I really don't want to use a subscription service in general because I personally always have this idea that when I get a plug-in I want to use it until the end of my life and in that case any of these prices would be high. I mean imagine four euro a month for the rest of your life that is just I'm not in the mood for math right now. Anyway it is just too much. So the question is couldn't something like Yamaha Hook also exist for the local samples that you have on your computer so that you don't have to buy loops via a subscription all the time and that is in fact what they added after they watched my video. So now you can select local matches here and then it will select the matches from your computer. Ah yeah and we can immediately see this thing is in fact in tune with the Rose Piano. 
and that's pretty cool. You might not be in the mood for a cello right now, but it might also be that you have completely forgotten that this cello sample exists. And you know, you have the sample on your hard drive, so it wastes space on your computer, but you don't remember it, so it is basically wasted space. I don't know how many gigabytes of samples you have on your computers, but I'm pretty sure you don't have all of them in mind. A software like this now at this point is really powerful. Now, before going on with the functionality of this plugin, let me show you the price of it, okay? So here we are on the Yamaha website, and if we click on Sound Assistant and go down here to the prices thing, we can see there is separation between Cloud Loops and Offline Agent. You already saw the subscription service for the Cloud Loops, and now the Offline Agent has these perpetual licenses available, 50 euro or 80 euro, and the only difference is here you can add your entire collection of musical elements, and here you can add up to 10,000 musical elements to your library. What does that mean? It means that this standalone app that you have seen a little bit earlier, the Yamaha agent, lets you add a bunch of folders that contain the samples that should be picked up by Yamaha. And as you can see down here, I'm currently at an indexing usage of barely more than 10,000 musical elements. So for me personally, this license would have been enough. But since I got it for free as an NFR license from the Yamaha team, props for that, I have this one. So I can add even more stuff to it. And maybe this is going to be important for me because honestly, I am not the most sample related dude of all time. You will notice that when we are listening to more of these samples that there is firstly a lot of repetitive stuff because I'm collecting lots of one shots of natural instruments in my folders. And secondly, yeah, as I already said, there is not a lot of fancy stuff. A kick. Like you might think this is a percussion sample, but maybe it is actually a little bit tonal and fits to the rest of the sounds. Yeah, I can see how the algorithm could think that this is a tonal sample. That makes sense. Ah, yeah. I can see how it would think that this is harmonically related because it has these little tonal moments in it. Like the, this one. And that was definitely in the key of whatever this is. Yeah. Okay, so it definitely is a plugin that gives you a lot of ideas of what you could do. And it will throw things together so wildly that it will just result in different sounds than the sounds that you would usually make. Here we are in a different project that I already worked on a few days ago. And there I had this Rhodes piano sound. So basically the same setup as before and then I just exclusively used Yamaha to fill in the gaps with other sounds except for this dub siren here and it became this. And then I did it again, but this time just starting from the drums in order to find other, let's say, harmonic samples, it became this. Now with these uh, very wildly mixed samples you can make some really cool transitions like this O that goes into the orchestra hit. Which for some reason works perfectly with this chord even though I have no idea what exactly the orchestra hit is doing. Also a nice little detail with this FX pop verb thingy. Has a bit of an 80s vibe to put something special on some of the first snares of a loop. Also this thing. It was the result of when you are putting Yamaha into the rhythm or drum section, where it tries to suggest more things based on the rhythmic qualities of the sound instead of the tonal one. Also das, was der Obama gesagt hat, das hat er in so einer Euphorie offensichtlich gesagt und hat sich an seine Jugendzeit erinnert, die offensichtlich manchmal auch ganz schön war. Okay, very rhythmic. They can be beautiful. I'm trapped. <laughs> I'm trapped. 
There was one thing I was a little bit unhappy about though when I made my last attempts at making this video because I gotta tell you I'm already working on this video for a lot of months and the problem that I had the whole time was just that my sample folders are not very good. I want to have more samples that are like splice samples where you have a lot of complexity in the sound already without adding a lot of processing every time because that would just feel much better in Yamaha. However I don't want to use splice or any other service that can provide these kind of loops because I genuinely think that you lose a lot of character from your music if you just use the pre-baked loops from other sound designers because making your own sound design is not just part of the fun but it is part of your sound and I think that should be pretty obvious but to some people it isn't. Anyway I went through all of my Bitwig projects that I made so far in my whole life and for each project I checked out which sounds I wanted to keep for new projects and I basically exported these sound out of these projects and it's this folder with 276 musical elements and now I will throw them into Yamaha as well and then try if it makes slightly better suggestions for a project that I just started a little bit earlier but first of all I have to make sure that all of them are normalized I once made this standalone software called batch normalize if I now went ahead and took all of these and dragged them into this it would find out which of these samples has the highest peak and then it will make sure that all of the samples are gained in a way that the sample with the highest peak is at minus one decibel. I wanted to use it on mastered albums to just you know finalize the audio files before uploading them however in this particular case it would be better to just manually drag in each file into this thing separately because I want everything to be just normalized with itself. Gotta say I kinda hate that I have to do this it's a bit boring. But it's definitely worth it. Like if you see here, there is 18 decibels of added gain on the sample that I dragged into here last because I apparently exported it at a really low level. So if that popped up in Yamaha and you could barely hear it, that would also be no fun. By the way, I will also upload this sample pack. So if you wanna make music like me for some reason, then you can do that. No, you can't because I'm not making music based on loops and you would make music based on loops. Even if I made the loops, it would not be like making music like me. So you would make very unprofessional music. No, wait, I'm making unprofessional music. So if you made music like me, that is not like the way I make music, then it would turn around again and you would be making professional music. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, finally. Now I have the whole folder here with the normalized samples. Rename it to something reasonable and copy it into my sound design folder. Now I need to refresh the sound design folder from the Yamaha app and it will rescan the files to find out that there are new files. And in the meantime, I can already load the project. Okay, I think I finished indexing. Now let's match this sequence again. That's nice. Nice, but so far I didn't hear any of the samples that I added. Oh, that's actually similar to this sound.
I'm a little bit confused now why it doesn't suggest the samples that I created. Oh yeah, finally. That's one of the loops that I created. So now I could import it. And Yamahawk already time stretched it to work almost perfectly with the tempo of this project, okay? It's not completely perfect. The BPM of this loop is shown in the name of the file. So theoretically, if this was time stretched based on the information that is given on the file, it could have been perfectly looped here. Also, you can hear some time stretching artifacts. This plugin tries to time stretch things to work with your music. In cases like this, I wish I could turn off the time stretching before importing it into the project so that I can decide for a time stretch algorithm myself. For example, repitching. Because resampling with the repitch algorithm is better for the transients than time stretching drums. So, in case of drums and other percussive elements, I would almost always prefer to just pitch the sample to bring it on a different speed than to time stretch it. That would be a cool new feature for Yamaha, in my opinion, that might make a difference in cases like these. But for now, I will just go into the settings and turn off match by BPM so that it will just give me the loops the, the way they are in tempo. Okay, so now we have something that was not time stretched, so I can repitch it to fit to this to the tempo of this beat. There is no BPM information on this one, but that's not a problem. We can just guess our way to the perfect speed. Yeah, that's perfect enough. nice. It sounds useful as well. I don't like the snare but I like the kick. Nice. Okay, a bit of a fill in. Can we use it? So in this case, the repitching algorithm doesn't sound too great. In a case like that, I would suggest to the Yamaha team to add a granular time stretcher for creative reasons, like the slice or the cyclic one in Bitwig. I think the cycling one is a bit cooler. Because sometimes when you're using these really crappy time stretch algorithms, that is the moment where the music really comes to life. It doesn't always have to try to be transparent. Now at this point I wish everything sounded like this transitional loop, you know. Oh nice, that is actually a sound that I recorded myself. I uh, removed a tape from the tape deck of my first car and recorded that because it has a cool sound. Now I have some cool granular sounding things that are actually not granular but real recordings. Also called Foley sounds. Nice. Now 
things like this can sound very nice when they are smashed massively with the clipper. Sounds like this have a very high peak level and you can smash them. And that makes it a little bit softer. And then you can use it as a background thing for whatever else is being layered with this better. Now I could imagine layering that with a snare or something without immediately losing all of the peak level headroom. So as you've probably noticed, there are way too many loops in there that are just taken from some old drum computers. So even though I added my glorious sample pack to the sample folders, it's still overshadowed massively by the other samples that I have in my sample folder. That's exactly why I didn't make this video earlier, because I feared that I would just make a massive sample pack and it would not be the thing that pops up in Yamaha, because I just need to make even more sample packs and I don't have the time to do all that. Oh, nice one. Wow, that's crazy. I love how nicely it aligns with the fact that the stuff starts here and then it does this dream thing. Okay, so my plan didn't work well to make a sample pack and then you know, have Yamaha pick it up. For that, I would need to have a little bit more of a setup. I probably need to rework this whole thing, like throw out a lot of the samples and loops that I already threw in here in order for it to pick up more of the actually juicy stuff. I will definitely do that sometime because I think that Yamaha is an incredible app that will save all of the samples that you will just not use otherwise. And it enables you to make beats like this. <laughs> That sound very creative because a lot of different kinds of sounds are mixed in a way that you wouldn't mix them if you compose them just by loading VST instruments. So you get a totally sample based workflow without the need to take samples from other people, which is cool. It just requires a lot of work to actually have the samples that make this incredibly cool. I think if I just keep on working on this, this has the potential to become really powerful. And when I feel like it's getting really sick, then I will make another follow-up video which will make this video outdated. But for now I would just be happy if you stopped watching that video and started watching this video in order to inform yourself about Yamaha because I think I captured some more of the essence of what makes this cool. Now before stopping with this video I would like to listen to some of the sounds of my sample pack with you together because you know, even though Yamaha didn't pick them up in this example, I still just want to um, showcase some of them and have a little bit of fun with you together. <laughs> Now obviously some of these are really long, so it's not, su not a surprise that Yamaha didn't suggest them. I think Yamaha can only suggest samples at a certain length 
and not a whole solo of a synthesizer. Would be kinda cool if it could though, because this is just a single instrument that does its thing and the scale doesn't change even though it is uh, one minute long, so it could be suggested to other loops. Now some of these have whole chord progressions in them because I felt like the chord progression is cool but I could imagine that Yamao might just suggest it based on some chord that it has heard in the sequence and you as the user uh, are expected to find out which one it was meant and cut that out from the rest and use just that one. Now this one is really weird, I think it won't be suggested a lot because of how weird the progression is. But maybe sometimes it will fit just right and these moments will be so glorious. Go, 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 go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Some old school stuff is in there as well. Juicy. This one is cool because it always plays the same up but massively changes its sound during the loop. So it's definitely a nice sample pack, I hope one day it will be picked up by Yamaha, but I should put some more work into it. I need to throw out a lot of samples from the sound assistant uh, so that the actual plugin can pick up the stuff the correct way and in the correct moments and it's not overshadowed by a bunch of snares and trumpet sounds and old drum computer raw loops. I mean it would be kind of cool if I could have all of that in it because sometimes it's nice to just work with the raw samples but at the moment it's just too much and I can't think of a better way to control that yet as by manually throwing out a bunch of stuff from which folders have been selected with the app. I will have to do that and then my sample pack will be working gloriously with the Yamaha hook stuff and until then it can just be used in a different way and the Yamaha hook app can be used with whatever sample folders you have which hopefully work better than mine for these kind of things. 